Hello viewers, have you applied for study permit before in the past and your application has been rejected or you want to apply and you're being scared about rejection? Alright, in this video today I'll be telling you the five prominent and common mistake people make that result in reject rejection of study visa. So you want to hang on tight, stay tuned because in this video I'll be telling you the five prominent mistake people make that result in most cases in study visa rejection. So hang on tight, stay tuned. I will be back. Okay, viewers, you're welcome back to my YouTube channel. I still remember my humble self, MC Bernardino. This is Canada Reality, where I dish out content for those that are in Canada and those that are intending on migrating to Canada. If per adventure this is your first time on this YouTube channel, please do me the favor. Please hit on the subscription button. There's a notification bell beside it. Click on it so that anytime I drop a video, you'll be among the first to get it. And if you're a first time on this YouTube channel or you're a returning viewers, please share my videos on your social media and those thank you very much for doing that i know you might be wondering that in the last uh, especially for last week i did not drop any video and you know that i always drop two videos in a week one on wednesday and one on friday it was due to uh, movement i had to change my location from one position to another so that was the reason why i could not drop a video but i'm back and better so you can expect two videos from me every week one on wednesday and one on friday all right without wasting much of your time let me tell you what i have for you today okay viewers just like i said told you earlier on that in this video today i'll be telling you five prominent common mistakes to avoid visa rejection this is the beginning of the year 2021 by the way i forgot to greet you happy new month so this is the beginning of a new year so many people are applying for their study visa and you need to know what are those mistakes that you will have to avoid and how can you go about it so that you will not fall in the same pit all like others or like you did initially all right so that's what i have for you today so the first common mistake reason for rejection is towels to family towels to back home so what do i mean by that i've done videos on this before in the past but i also want to discuss about it with you so when i say towels to family back home so this is one of the prominent reasons why i study visa have been rejected i mean sometimes when my subscribers my viewers when they share their rejection letter with me this is one of the prominent i can say one in every two or three this is one of the reasons they give and what does that mean so that simply means that the visa uh, officer that is looking at your file is does not feel you have sufficient towels to back home that shows that when you're done your study you will go back home so because of that the visa officer could actually reject your visa don't forget that when you're applying to come study in canada you're trying to tell the visa officer that when you're done studying irrespective of the fact that you still have to work after your study you want to convince the visa officer that you want to go back home so if you cannot prove that then he or she that is looking at your file we have no other reason than to reject your file so what you can do i said it in the past and i'm going to say it again is Please try as much as possible to prove that towels to back home. What towels do you have to back home? Examples are your family back home. You have to show the connection that will take you back home. Your job back home. What kind of job do you do? A reference letter from your employer that shows that you have a good job and you'll be going back to it. If you have a company back home, you need a memorandum of understanding from your company, your certificate of registration, things like this that shows that you will go back home. You need to include it in your application. You need to write it in the letter of purpose, letter of intent. So those are the things that the visa officer will look at that shows that, oh, this person, when he's done, there's a strong affinity to his own country and he might go back, even if you will not go back eventually. Second on my list on five prominent common mistakes to avoid study visa rejection would be insufficient proof of fund. Yes, I mean, we cannot overemphasize this. I mean... Another prominent reason why visa applications are being rejected and I feel that I should share with you so that you will not fall, fall in the same pit hole is insufficient proof of fund. I mean, so many people ask me this question, how much is enough? I mean, that question is relative and I've answered it tons and tons without, I can't even remember. What I can just tell you is that you need to be able to show sufficient proof of fund in your bank accounts before you can apply to come and study in Canada and how much is enough. So take for instance, hypothetically, your tuition fee is like 15,000 Canadian dollars. If you have the financial capability, either yourself or your sponsor, if you can pay the 15,000 Canadian dollars, get the tuition fee receipt, upload it when you are applying for the study visa, 
in addition to that if you can show additional ten thousand canadian dollars don't forget i said you have paid your tuition fee you have your receipt and you are going to upload it when you're applying for your visa in addition to that you need to show a minimum of ten thousand canadian dollars that is what is expected of you for your uh one, for your one year living expenses as an international student so if you can show ten thousand canadian dollars and something again i need to let you know is that the ten thousand is not something that you just uh before you print your bank statement you just put it put it in like a week or one month before you print your bank statement no you need to be able to show consistently your bank statement for the last six months you need to show transaction of money because the immigration officer that is looking at your file wants to see that consistency how the money transaction in your bank account or your sponsor's account as the case is how does money flow in and out so they want to see that they don't want to see something that was arranged take for instance you just put in a huge sum of sum of money all of a sudden and you printed the bank statement that is fishy and in some instances that give a red flag for rejection of your application so what i can tell you is that as far as that is concerned try as much as possible your sponsor it's not something you want to rush about i mean some people so many people are in a rush they can't even wait for that six months to build the bank statement they just want to print the bank statement now no in most cases i advise that if you can take your time plan your study that you're coming into canada and at the same time plan the uh, proof of fund the statement of account that you want to build so it needs to be shown over the last six months and you need to have sufficient fund in your bank account don't forget if you're not paying the full tuition if the full tuition is fifteen thousand, if you are paying half which is like seven million seven um seven thousand rather canadian dollars you need to be able to show that eight thousand in the bank account and in addition to that you need to show your living expenses for one year which is another ten thousand in total you're looking at showing eighteen thousand as a proof of so this depends on how much you've paid part of the tuition fee your living expenses and so many other factors so what i can just tell you is that try as much as possible to show sufficient more than enough proof of fund and also try as much as possible to print the bank statement for the last six months because the visa officer want to see the inflow and outflow of money in that bank account to show the competency and the capability for you to sponsor yourself education wise and living wise while you are in canada okay viewers so let us go to the third reason on the five prominent reasons why study visa have been rejected and i want you to look into that rectify that so that you don't fall into the same quagmire all right and that will be wrong program wrong choice of program i've seen a lot of uh, rejection letter from ircc and this is one of the prominent reasons why study visa have been rejected so when i say a wrong program i mean people are so much in the ace to pick any program to come and study in canada they do, they do not do their due diligence to see what program they are coming to study in Canada. Whether So you need to be able to show previous antecedents that relates to that program. Take for instance, you did nothing at your undergraduate level and you want to come into Canada to come and do a master's in engineering. I mean, how does that work? It doesn't correlate. So you need to be able to show relationship between what you've done in the past and what you are coming to do in Canada. Because the moment you give the visa officer reason to re to doubt that, he or she might just feel that you just want to come into Canada. It's not, you're not coming for the study, actually. You just want to just find your way to Canada. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that try as much as possible to see, let there be a flow between what you've done in the past education-wise and what you want to come and do in Canada. And not only that, you should, if what you have done education-wise does not correlate with what you're coming to do in Canada, you should be able to show that affinity in terms of work experience. So take for instance, you might have uh, probably studied English at your undergraduate level and you had opportunity to work in the bank from your own country. As a result of that, you can come into Canada to come and study something in the financial um, sector. I mean, the financial, any course in, fina in finance. So because your work experience is going to compensate for why you're coming to come and study uh, something in the finance aspect even despite the fact that your undergraduate was in English so I don't I, I hope you try to understand what I'm trying to say so there should be a correlation between your previous study or your work experience and what you are coming to do in Canada if the immigration officer cannot see a flow between what you have done in the past and what you are coming to do that could be a very big reason why your application could be rejected and that's why some applications are being rejected so i hope you understand that if you feel you do not understand if you want more enlightenment on this feel free to drop it in the comment section and i will do justice to your question if you enjoyed this video please 
smash on the like button. Number four, on the five prominent reasons why study visa are being rejected is lack of job prospects in your home country. I've seen that on so many rejection letters, lack of job prospect in your home country. So this is more common for applicants in the third world country. I mean, so take for instance, third world countries like my country, Nigeria, so many African countries, some Asian countries that are third world countries. This is one of the region, reasons Canada uh, visa officers, they get for reason for rejection. What they're trying to say is that because there's no job prospect in those third world countries, they feel that you're probably going to be a liability when you come into Canada. Or even they also feel that if you finish studying in Canada, because there's no job back home, you will not definitely, you will not go back because there are no job for you. So that is why they say, okay, lack of job prospect in your own country. I know that has nothing to do with you. There's nothing you can do about that because it is not your own making, it's not your own doing that you are from a third world country or that you were born there and there's nothing you can do about that. But what I can just tell you to do in order for you to address that when you want to apply is just try as much as possible to, if you have a job before you apply, get a reference letter from your employer that shows that you have a job, that shows that they, want to, they know about you going to Canada to go and study and definitely you will be going back. And if you don't have a job, Try as much as possible to come up with a convincing letter of purpose, statement of purpose on why you will come back. I mean, you want to make them understand that you can write it in the, uh, in the letter that probably you've got some job offers back home, but it's just because you do not have this particular knowledge that you're coming to fill in Canada. That is why you could not get those jobs. At the moment you're done and you get that um, um, educational experience you will definitely be going back so anything that you can use to prove that any document that you can use to prove that please trust which is possible to app, include it in your application while you're submitting your application because um, I I hate to see I mean visa officer coming up with that excuse that oh, there's no job in your home country it is not your doing just like I said earlier it could be because of government and whatever but try as much as possible to see how you can convince the immigration officer in that aspect by providing a job um, reference letter, job offer if you have one, or coming up with a very good and a very strong letter of intent. Okay, Via, so last but not the least, on the five prominent mistakes to avoid visa rejection for those that want to come and study in Canada is, guess, inadequate travel history inadequate travel history. So that is another main reason that I've seen tons and tons of time on visa, applica uh, visa re uh, rejection letter from applicants. Inadequate travel history. So what that visa officer is trying to tell you in essence is that you do not have sufficient travel history in the past and he or she is not convinced that your first time leaving your own country and coming to Canada you will come back. So, I mean, it's, it's just a normal thing for someone to think, right? Because at the visa officer, if take for instance, someone that has been to the US in the past, you've been to UK, Scotland, wherever, in, wherever you've been to, and you've returned back to your home country, you have shown that consistency. The, the visa officer can trust that, oh, he's been to US, he went back home, he's been to India, he went back home, China, he went back home, Ghana, he went back home, wherever. There's a possibility that if he, he or she, if I grant he or she the visa to come to Canada, he or she would definitely go back. So that's a kind of conviction on the part of uh, the visa officer. And that's why he or she might grant you based on that. But if you do not have any travel history, you've not left your home country before, and you're applying for the first time, there might be a kind of, uh, you know, the non-convincing part of it that, oh, if I grant this application, will this person return back? So that's another reason why visa applications are being rejected. So in order for you to address this, what would I suggest you do? So what I would suggest you do is, in as much as if you can apply to go to US, to Dublin, to Ireland, to UK, if you can do that before applying for Canada visa, that is fine. If you can do that and get it, I know it's so tough, but if you can do that, that's fine. But in as much as you cannot get that, there are some neighboring countries that you can actually try. If you're an Indi if you're, you're applying from you're an Indian person applying, you can go to countries within your Asian community. If you're an African applying, you can go to countries within the African communities, go there and come back, just to show that you've been outside of your home country and you return back. So, I mean, that shows 
pedigree on your own part in terms of travel history and that can also help you when you eventually apply for Canada because the visa officer sees that you've traveled before you've never overstayed your welcome in those countries that you went to so there's a possibility that if you come to Canada you'll be well behaved too so that is another reason why visa are being rejected all right viewers i hope you understood the video that i brought for you today on the five prominent mistakes to avoid visa rejection as far as coming to canada to study is concerned i told you about lack of tiles to back home i told you about inadequate insufficient proof of fund i told you the choice of program could be a mitigating factor i told you about lack of travel history that could also be a stumbling block towards your application to come into canada and if there's no job prospects in your own country, especially for third world countries, you, that can also amper your coming into, coming into Canada. And likewise, in this video too, I told you how you can address these stumbling blocks and at the end of the day, you might be so lucky just like I was and you will get your study visa approved. I felt I should do this video because this is the beginning of a new year. People are applying and people are looking for some some people have been rejected and so some people are new they want to try as much as possible to avoid rejection and that is why i felt i should share this video with you in the beginning of the new year because it can actually go a long way in helping those that are sourcing for this kind of information please if you enjoyed this video please once again smash on the likes button and also endeavor to share this video on your social media and your facebook twitter instagram share with whoever because you don't know you might be doing someone a great favor and also are you a returning viewer or you've been coming you have not made up your mind endeavor to please hit on the subscription button there's a notification bell beside it click on it so that anytime i drop a video you'll be among the first to get it don't forget i do two videos in a week one on wednesday and one on friday till i see you again in my next video please stay safe <music>